Hey guys, in this video we'll be taking a look at the new features added in release 1.1.1. So as you can see here, uh, this is a, a fairly uh, small update, but I still wanted to go over uh, what's new here. The files have been submitted to Epic and should be available in a couple of days. So once you update your project, you should have the following features. Uh, the first thing we'll take a look at is the uh, the main menu is now uh, using as well the level linking system that is the uh, the data table used to manage how uh, the levels are loaded. So prior to this update, uh, level Cornero is actually hard coded on the um, start game button, right? So before, if you want to load a game and you clicked here, you obviously had the option of loading any of the games that you had saved. However, if you clicked start game, Cornero was always loaded, right? So if you wanted to change that for your game, you had to go into the actual menu here um, and change the, the, you know, the string inside the open level um, node. I changed that because that was kind of unintuitive. And now if you go to DT underscore levels, you'll see that now there is a new entry. It's actually the first entry here. And you'll see that the level main menu, which is this one, now has an entry uh, and a column for next level. So right now, if I click start game, basically you'll just go to Corneria just as before, but now you have the option of making this any level that you want, right? So if you're making your own game and you have, you know, level X, uh, you don't have to change anything inside the, the um, widget. You just come here and manage your level just as you would for anything else. Uh, so again, pretty simple change, but it's a kind of a quality of life change. The second change, which I think is, is kind of cool, um, is I've added loading screen functionality. And nobody really asked for this, but as I was going through um, just looking at the template, I realized uh, based on your machine, sometimes a level could take a long time to load. Uh, and what happens is if I go to an older version here, uh, and I let me just open the, uh, the main menu here, if you click on start game, right, and you're loading your level, basically the screen that you have gets frozen, completely frozen until the new level is loaded, right? Uh, so not not really nice, right? Especially if, if, if you're taking 10, 15 seconds, it looks like the game froze. Uh, so in the new version here, if you click on start game, you'll notice that now you have a loading screen that shows up uh, until the new level is loaded. And not only that, but you have the ability to randomize the loading screen or have a specific loading screen show up. So right now, as a default, Every time you click start game, a random loading screen will appear. You can see here, there's another one. Now let me just try again and see if another one comes up. There you go, the Corneria one. Um, so you have the ability to, to show different loading screens. Uh, and right now the template comes with, I believe it's five. If you go under textures, loading screens, I have added uh, five uh, images as loading screens. Of course, you just add uh, your own, uh, but these are actually 4K images. And you'll notice that uh, if you're ever wanting to add these, make sure you have no MIP maps and you have texture group UI so they're not uh, compressed. Uh, and these are the loading screens that are that are shown either specifically or at random, right? The same thing happens if you are um, playing your level. So let's let's just go ahead and start the game here. And you say level Corneria. And I'm going to force the game to uh, to load the next level. Um, and in this case, when you're going from level to level, I'm not do, I'm not showing a random screen, but I'm showing a specific screen that I want to show. So the next level is going to be the survival mode. Uh, and what I did is I wanted to show that same level loading. Right, so as soon as this uh, is completed, you can see this is loading, please wait, and it shows the actual survival game mode. And if I complete this one as well, the next level is time attack mode, and it should show a time attack mode screenshot as the loading screen, right? So you can now customize um, the loading screen either based on the level that's coming up next, or you can have it as a random screen, right up to you. 
uh, and I'm just going to show you the screen and then we're going to move on. There you go. So loading, please wait. And that was the time attack mode. And of course, as soon as you start, you can see that this is the actual level, right? And so if you wanted to uh, to do it randomly, um, you would do it um, by calling a function. I'm going to I'm going to come here. Let's see. There's a new event called I'm going to go back here. There's a new event called event show loading screens. It's a custom event that's been added and there is a function that you call from a from a loading uh, screen um, widget and as you can see here you can select whether it is a random loading screen that is shown or you can pass in a screen uh, index and the index goes from 0 to 4 because we have five images right 0 1 2 3 and 4 so if you select random there's a boolean here that says random loading screen. This is under the control category. If you wanted to select a random loading screen as you're going from level to level, it'll just call this function and pass in the parameter random. If you wanted it to be a specific loading screen, obviously this would be false, which is the default. And then you'll see here that the code is actually going to the data table and getting the loading screen index directly from the data table row and going into the screen index here. Right. So if I go back to my DT levels table here, you'll notice that now there's a new column. It says loading screen index. And this is the index of the picture that will be used when you're loading the next level. So if you're in Corneria, you, you know that the next level is survival mode. Here's the level screenshot that will be used if you save it. If you have any level music, you have to specify it here. And the loading screen index is 1. The screen index of 1 is this image right here, which coincidentally is the screenshot of the next level. right? So you can set it up that way. right? Um, you can go here and you can select the index. And of course, you can add as many images as you want. You could have 10, 15, 20, 100 images. And you just have to come here and select the index of the picture that will be used and it will automatically display that screenshot or you can have it as i have it uh, in this case as a random screenshot and it'll pick an image out of all of your index of images and it'll display it so pretty cool um, again this is fairly simple but i think it does make a difference uh, as you know if, if you're having the the player wait 10 15 seconds you don't want them to think that your level froze. Specifically, if you're if you're playing in a, in a level that's like a survival game mode or a time attack mode, you definitely want to make sure that you show them that the level is loading, right? Cool. So I've also added an, uh, an ascend and a descend um, keys to thrust mode. And I'm going to go to this project here um, to show you just that. If I go to the level test. And I click play, and I've showed this in another video. Not only can I just go forward and backwards now, or I can stop in midair, but now by using the E key, I can go up, and by using the Q key, I can go down, up and down. And that's new. And what I've what I've done is uh, I've taken out the ability to barrel roll where you're stationary, which, by the way, didn't really make sense anyway. I've added a, a change, and I'm, this is not something I can really show, but I've changed the way that blueprints um, detect the player. Uh, you know, and that that means the enemies, how the enemies detect the player, or how things like uh, pickups detect the player, or a bunch of the triggers. Uh, I used to look for a specific class, um, but I wanted to make it even more versatile, and I'm using a tag called player. And the reason for that is because in the future, if I ever make an upgrade where I include separate vehicles, I don't want to have to continue to add classes for all of the different elements in the template. But as long as your your pawn has the tag player, everything should work out of the box. So this is a quality of life change. You, you're not going to notice anything new. But again, this is setting me up for future upgrades. Or if you ever wanted to add another vehicle or another pawn, this would automatically make sure that everything else works in the template. Okay. I've also added a third person character integration. 
uh, and I've shown this again on the previous video, but I'll show it here again. Um, you know, now you have the ability to um, integrate a third person character um, like this one from Epic that could um, board and onboard your ship. And by the way, it doesn't have to be third person. You can have a first person. This is basically any other pawn that you that you have. Now you have the ability to um, uh, control it this way. And what I'm doing is I am including a macro library that has all of the functionality that you need to quickly hook up a, um, a separate template. I will not be including the third person template as you are seeing on this project because that's just going to further uh, um, increase the size of the template and I think this is a very specific use case. But I will have a tutorial on the channel that will go through exactly what you need to do step by step to make sure that you do um, integrate the template and you have exactly what you see here, right? Uh, so don't worry, you will have all the code and that, and all you have to do is follow a few simple steps and you'll have it uh, as you see it there. There was also a bug that somebody uh, pointed out where the, the field of view was infinitely uh, changing while you were boosting. And this is kind of a, a funny bug um, that has been fixed. If I go to Corneria here, um, I can show you real quick. Just uh, go to the full player start. And this only happened if you kept boosting as soon as, um, as, soon as you, you were done. Right, notice that the field of view um, doesn't really get reset and it keeps going and going and going. And eventually gets to the point that it gets just completely unmanageable. So that has been fixed in the upcoming update. Again, you probably never even realized that this was a problem, uh, but uh, it's fixed. So And for some reason, I can't reproduce it right now as, as I'm showing you. But trust me, there was a bug uh, and that has been fixed. Well, I guess you can see it there a little bit. And finally, um, I've added a child blueprint example. And this is again, uh, based on some feedback uh, from some, some people that were trying to figure out if I wanted to add my own custom mesh or I wanted to create a new blueprint class based on the, on the player ship, but I wanted to make some changes, how can I do that, right? Uh, and that's exactly right. So if you go to level test, and this is kind of a dummy level that I've included here, you can go ahead and delete it. Um, if I click play, you'll notice that I just have uh, the regular ship. But if I go to world settings and I can override the game mode, I can go and select player VP ship one. So you can see here, which is exactly a, um, if you go to um, blueprint characters player, you'll see that you have BP ship one and it is a child of BP player ship. If I click play now, just uh, right here, you'll notice that the ship is uh, blinking. That's an, a new material. So I've changed the material. Uh, the speed of the ship has also been increased and I've added bombs by default. So you can see it starts with five bombs. So this is just a very simple example of, of what you can do if you ever wanted to include uh, your own uh, custom ship, right? So if I just open this blueprint, you'll notice that it's the exact same mesh in this case. But if you go to the event graph, you'll see exactly what I did here. Uh, I have changed the speed to 25 up from 10, and this is the way you would do it. I saved the base color material, and this is how you would um, save the base material if it's on index zero. And I've added five bombs to make sure that we start with five bombs. There's a lot of other things that you can do, right? So my recommendation would be go to the BP player ship blueprint here and look at uh, what are the things that you have control over here. And if you ever wanted to make any changes here, 
let's say the boost duration let's say you want the boost to be twice as, as long right right now it's if the boost is one second let's say that you have one ship that wanted to make a boost of two seconds or three seconds right uh, you can make that change there um, you know barrel roll delay there's a, a host of things like a laser fire rate if you wanted the fire rate to be faster for example all those things you could easily change by making a child blueprint and making those changes here on the event begin play. Uh, and that would mean that then, as soon as you play the level, um, now you have your custom ship with custom parameters and you haven't really touched um, the original um, the original blueprint. So really cool. I will also make um, a tutorial video showing you how to create your own new uh, child blueprint from scratch including how to integrate a uh, custom mesh that's on the pipeline here uh, but in the meantime i thought i'd add a um, an example here so that's pretty much it uh, level linking for the main menu loading screen functionality which i think is really nice enhancement to the thrust mode um, quality of life changes for future updates integration with a with a new character third person or first person bug fixes in a child bp example um, so if you have any questions about these changes i know that the documentation is lagging behind i apologize for that uh, all my free time i am spending on trying to make this template better and adding new features that are being requested and things that i deem that are necessary so if you have any questions at all please feel free to reach out to me or just make a comment on this video thank you guys so much and i will see you on the next video